Okay, a rundown of <clears throat> weekly commodities here Friday, uh, the 23rd of September 2016. Uh, this week we basically saw uh, uh, a weaker dollar after the FOMC uh, failed to act. Uh, the marketplace uh, has been bidding up debt since the December 2015 first rate hike. So the marketplace said no to the Fed. No way, Jose. So we're looking through here. Uh, the weaker dollar did find some interest in commodities. Uh, some of them, like gold and oil, did, uh, didn't see follow through through uh, what I'd be, show would be resistance. Uh, Australian dollar. Australian dollar is holding up much better than the Kiwi at this time. Uh, this is a weekly bar. Uh, looking for it to pause in this area. Uh, I'm not a big fan of going long the Aussie dollar on this here, but I'd take it more on the short side. Uh, breakout through here. Uh, British pound, uh, commitment of traders report, British pound, uh, they're beginning to press their hand on the short side. I like the long side of this, just using history and the commitment of traders, history of the British pound after the uh, ERM exchange rate mechanism fallout about 20 years ago, the, the British pound actually went higher after their... Um, Discounting of the currency. So I like it on the long side uh, using the commitment of traders here. Uh, see about next week, possibly. Uh, say 131 from now. I talked about this morning's uh, 127 on the, on the low end here. Um, I'm just going off of the commitment of traders and not as much as the pattern as, as the number of players looking one way. Uh, We'll say too short, that kind of thing. Okay. And unbalanced vol or money flow here is getting to be oversold. I'm getting out of them. And Canadian dollar, if the Canadian dollar were to go higher, all oil would also follow. You can see the pullback along with oil. Uh, stand aside for right now what you do have a nice sideways pattern in here which basically means at some point you're gonna get a breakout a trend uh, basically any type of pullback 70 under 74 is gonna clean out a lot of sideways here we might have an incident where we, we slice through uh, work under 74 and then go higher here Uh, basically, the euro, uh, if the dollar's down, the euro should be up. Uh, basically, multi-weeks of sideways here. Uh, it does have that look, though, that it's pausing before it wants to move higher. It did say uh, resistance uh, 113.14, upper end 116. Uh, I favor anything on the short side down, uh, we'll say 106 area. I'd like to fade any rally here. Okay, Japanese yen. Uh, Japanese yen has had a decent run, but running into some problems here. Uh, Needs some follow through. Uh, it has moved for an extended period of time. There's still more room to run here with the money flow. Uh, eyeball this one just like the Mexican peso as a reversal on here. Uh, Mexican peso, Mexican peso. Cleaning them out here. Uh, I like the long side of the Mexican peso. I expect the exchange or the emerging markets to all unwind. Uh, should be a blow off on the pair, the US dollar, Mexican peso should have a blow off there. Uh, I like the short side here of the New Zealand dollar, the Kiwi. Uh, Swiss franc, 
looks like it's gonna it's poised just like the euro to go higher here uh watch for um intervention here i believe in just leaving markets alone um but i like this one on the short side uh, eventually it'll come back down uh brent oil um i'm gonna still have to lean uh, somewhat on the long side here but you could have uh two three dollar drop here okay i just think that this is this anchor is going to hold for a while what's this down here 32 33. see how this pans out here with this sar um down to let's see brent 43 35. so about three dollars lower see how things pan out then let's see if we get some uh cleaning out of the um money flow there uh, crude oil, basically the same thing. Weekly held up, held about half. Uh, still has room to run. Uh, Needs some follow through here uh, for bull flag. That's that's kind of how I'm treating this. This is a weekly bull flag. Uh, you know, we're, here's 52. So we're, you know, we're back to that talk again. Get through 47 here and play at 49, 51, 53, 54 area. And then the talking heads will come out and start talking, you know, 60 to 75. Uh, cotton, cotton had a nice uh, run up and pull back. Okay, we're about 50%. I like it on any weakness here. Uh, I'd rather start a position uh, uh, in the spring um, for right now instead of, uh, uh, buying longs on a new high here. Prefer to wait. I guess let's take a look here. 67, 69, two cents. All right. That's a thousand bucks. So that's like uh, 20 has some e mini points here. So I suppose if you buy in on that, would be your stop. Two cents, thousand dollars. Sixty four. Okay, the NASDAQ worked on a new high today, whereas the Dow and uh, the S&P here um, poked its head through and pulled back. Definitely have to hold, uh, we'll say 40, 45. Okay, it has to hold about half of uh, this week's trade. Um, I'm still leaning on the defensive side of things here. Um, like I said, the indexes are the last to go because of uh, uh, they have uh, indexing going on. So the money just filters through a narrower set of issues. Like I pointed out, IBM peaked in 2013. Uh, Apple, Apple, you can go Apple, Disney, Nike, you know, just start a list that may have peaked last year and may have peaked in overall in general too. Um, you can see the money flow is up here higher than previously. It is a rollover though on the contract. Um, like I said, tough sled in here. Uh, we'll it added it added it's holding decent uh what do we have one more one more week of this here we're coming into the end of the month too so twenty one eighty so we're playing it back by twenties again uh forty to sixty sixty to eighty and pull the plug is twenty one hundred here though I have alarms up here on the odds.
and gold, possible bull flag again here. Um, like I mentioned earlier in the, uh, November and December uh, bullish on, on metals, the target was 1400. Uh, we're basically holding so far 1320. He probably pulled the plug on it here. Good correlation with the dollar for now. Whoops. There you go. Ding dong. Uh, the last swing in gold at 1400, it's, I'll pass. I'm looking for gold to roll over. Uh, wow, well, with commodities and the stronger dollar. Okay. This I thought was interesting here. This is uh, Euro dollars. So we may be getting some of um, the pressure taken off uh, on the, the loose purchasing of debt. And you can see that the open, uh, the money flow is out of it too. So we may have a pause here where they, they move back into uh, T-bills and Euro dollars and things of that nature uh, to hide out if equity slide. Now I think following again, commodities, you know, peaked out in 14 uh, stocks, 14, 13, 14, 15 for some 16. Uh, uh, you know, we may have seen the high uh, for the NAS or for the uh, S&P and the uh, Dow for the year here. So they may hide out in uh, debt, uh, get out of equities, and the only thing left to pile into would be real estate. If commodities aren't working and equities aren't working, they're not, they're not making any more land, right? Uh, copper uh, holding itself together here pretty good. Um, basically, I just think it's it'll pause again up in here and stall. Money flow is moving pretty quickly for the price here. I haven't seen the commitment of traders, so I don't know how badly the, the funds and the little guy might be short. I'll have to take a look at that for you. Uh, natural gas. Uh, I'm going to treat this uh, for bulls. I'm going to treat this as a retest of breakout and uh, we may have to clean them out down to 280 here. So there may be another 20 cents on the downside here. Um, and it can be quick too. Over one to three days here, so we'll see how that pans out. Uh, but I'm going to treat it right now as a retest of the breakout, but an ominous sign here for me is this money flow. And then we could have a drop to uh, 280 level. I have my windows open and the air off uh, all day. Lucky me, huh? First time since... April or May, I think. All right. NASDAQ. Okay, we had a NASDAQ. All right, we've been watching the NASDAQ for the breakout. We get a breakout. Uh, I'm going to assume we're going to work on a retest of the breakout area, but it cannot falter here. 74.30 for me would be the pull the plug part. Uh, we have some earnings coming through next week. What do we have? Nike. I'll take a look at that. I'll do a video on uh, earnings here. Uh, but as I said, it, uh, we're back to the service issues. You want to own, um, since we're 84% service in the economy, you want to own the NASDAQ, your, your growth stocks, your Russells, things of that nature. But... I'm, like I said, I'm a little bit cautious for right now. And Friday's action and Twitter's any indication. Um, games are being played. Uh, just like with the, the amount of bodies that ran into the Apple calls. Uh, we stopped to 190s. And now we're at uh, 111 and change. 116 last week. So that's not working out. And those go through the end of October. So maybe the next five weeks are going to be quite the interesting deal here. Uh, 
uh, gasoline and a reversal here. Uh, if you're short from last week's uh, long heating oil, short gasoline here, uh, I'd put this. I'd put the stops uh, in here to kind of lock in a profit um, because of uh, the situation in oil. This may be quick where gasoline comes through, say 126 to 128 area, and then comes back through. We are beginning to normalize here on, on these commodities. Uh, sugar, last Friday's hard run, the continuation, but it closed uh, at the lower third, lower, lower 20 quarter of the bar. So I have to be careful of sugar, uh, possibly a full reversal here. Uh, sugar, can, and then the funds will bully that around too. Uh, this is too much, a little too much of a pullback for me for, you know, the breakout, you know, for say a retest. Uh, what do we have here? Put an alarm at 2030. I do like sugar though. It's one of the few. We're, I am noticing more in these commodities that things, it's individual markets, but remember there's just so much money out there they can bowl these things. Uh, silver. Uh, Thursday and Friday, you know, we went into uh, USLV as a play for a couple of bucks. Um, as you can see, the money flow is not here in silver, so you could have an, an, uh, where this, I'll just treat this as a bull flag, that it runs higher here uh, and the money flow can come into it. So those in US or DSLV may want to take your profit. Uh, the first nibble was, I think, Wednesday at 1885, and the second nibble was scaled down from 1822 to 1804. I think we're at 19, so you might want to take some of that off here. We'll see how silver behaves at 1950 here. Uh, I'll go 55. Ah, we'll do it that way. Okay, because money flow can kick in if this thing comes through, back through 20. All right, here's your Russell. Here's the high end Russell. Um, comes up to the resistance, hard reversal. Chasing after with money flow, I'd be a little cautious uh, if the Russell loses uh, 1233 here. A lot of these, I'm getting them kind of tight though, because of you, you can end up with a, you know, you come back through here, 1200, you come back through, you left a, a lower high with a lot of bodies. There are more bodies in Russell now than before, okay? And yet, who's gonna buy up in here if there are, if, if they're more than in? So cautious here. Oops. Ultra bond, I'd be interested in shorting into this area. I think the interest rates will continue to go higher. Uh, they are above the uh, Brexit and um, December low, right? Yeah. Yeah, the anchor's holding. Same thing here, the Dow. We have Nike next week. Um, there is still more room to run on the island balance volume, but I'd be interested in shorting maybe 1884 here. Let's see how that works out. Same thing on the bonds, be willing to sh short up into here. Uh, 169 to 171 and a half area. Uh, corn here is kind of making a harvest low here. Uh, not much can come out of it on the money flow. 
It's trying to hold, trying to hold the 320 area, 320, 340. Uh, five, uh, five years, same thing. Sell, sell the rally. Um, where are we at? 17, 2017, 24, seven years. So the seven years are going to start to come into play here for working on a recession. Um, and the fives would be uh, three years. Yeah. Cause if the fed's going to stay in their timeline, they will continue to hike until 2018. Bean oil. Uh, if you're a producer, I'd look to uh, do some hedging. Uh, meal, hard sell-off. Uh, not much for on the um, the meat prices right now, but you may want to get, you know, put some on feed here uh, with the cheaper prices. Uh, and I expect a mild winter too, if you work it that way. And uh, if the prices are right, you know, you could uh, do beef uh, over the holidays here instead of poultry <laughs> or pork. Uh, yes, that's what we'd like to see is standing rib roast kind of deal, right? Everybody learn how to do one of those. And it's uh, relatively inexpensive too. Same thing on notes. I'd want to sell them on 32 area uh, point higher. Uh, soybeans, that's highest. The $12 is going to hold for a while. And, and I think we're going to work our way below uh, $9 here. Two years, same thing, short on any bounce. 109, 12, 13 area. Uh, wheat. Uh, people are beginning to nibble on wheat here. I'd have to say buy on any pullback. Uh, you're going to, you're going to get some decent swings here. Uh, tradable. Remember that uh, if you're an ES trader, the minis, um, grains are also $50 a penny. So, you know, five to eight cents or, or 20 cents in wheat, you know, it's a decent trade. And you can get off your trades. There was enough in there. All right, we're back to the beginning. And take a look one more here. Uh, focus on this week, uh, or the last week of September, I'm gonna be focusing on the British pound, the Japanese yen, uh, Canadian dollar with oil, and then uh, uh, the Mexican peso for reversals. All right, everyone have yourself a wonderful weekend and thank you for stopping by.